right then. It is about 9.30, again, uh, Sunday, Easter. I uh, had family over today, had a really great day. They also brought me a birthday present that completely blew my mind, and I thought it was way too expensive to be spending on someone like me. But, you know, if family loves you, family takes care of you. We are back in the shop. Uh, I'm not sure where this video falls. We're getting ready to address the coolant leak on the B275. At least inspect and investigate what we got to do to get it fixed. Let's check our oil leak. Well, at least that crack will never freeze and bust in the floor. But, uh, yeah, it's getting there. I mean, God only knows how long it's been leaking that bad. So... We'll probably have to do a fluid service on the trans and fix that leak. Not today, though. Eventually. On to our coolant leak. Uh, it looks like that's pretty substantial. I know it wasn't doing that before we came in here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that whole thing looks green now. And we're going to just go check out the other side. Yeah, that's. I'm pretty alarmed about that. A little oil leak in here and there you can always top up. But with coolant, um, yeah, if that thing were to burst, it would just be a cloud of steam and hot stuff all over me or whoever else is driving it, and the fan would blow it right back at you. So, I guess let's get all this taken apart. Probably service the oil bath air cleaner, or at least clean it first, since it also has to be removed. All right, so I'm gonna give a quick explanation of how an oil bath air cleaner works before we take it apart. So you see up here, air obviously comes in, it goes down a canister, and then you think, okay, well, the air comes out here, also at the top, uh, and then to the throttle body, with this diesel actually has a throttle body, the intake manifold the engine. The air comes down here, goes through an oil-soaked filter uh, mesh screen. You'll see it. But yeah, it's filled with oil to this line. And the air actually passes through the oil and bubbles up into the filter. And then, obviously, the oil's too heavy, so it stays down. Air flows through. Oil, sticky. Uh, dust sticks to oil, which is why... Oil leaks look like that. They, they don't, you know, they, they have dirt and dust on them. You know, sure, you could take this, you know, and wipe it clean, but all the, the, the gritty stuff, the oil captures it. Is it a perfect system? By no means. But this is the best way they found uh, way back in the day to filter the air. Uh, and if you think about it, K&N air filters are oiled. You have a fine mesh that is wet and all the dust in the air, uh, all the contaminants stick to that wet dust. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess technically kind of still using that technology. All right, so we're going to pop this oil cap off, uh, bottom oil cap. You know, that sounds weird, but all it is, it's got three of these. Some of them may have a band clamp, uh, or a screw on top where that's an entirely different style. I guess I should show you that on a different piece of equipment I have. Not today, but in the future, maybe. So you reach back here, you find one somewhere, flip them up. Flip this guy up, and this guy. And it should not fall off. Usually they don't anyways. Yeah, but you gotta also make sure that your little triggers are off. Oh, yeah, that one's off. And kind of give her a shake, maybe. Usually doing this two-handed. Hang on. All right. I just cracked this thing loose. You should see what comes out. There's your filter screen. Air travels down the center <clears throat> through the oil. And then the clean air comes up through these mesh pleats. Now, I did extensively clean this thing last year, and I am super satisfied with how it looks now, because we did put several dusty hours on it. We're right, good. Set it down. Let me get the, uh, what Google calls the torch on. Apparently, we're all British, right? No offense to anybody in British or wherever else to say torch. It's a light. 
flash it's camera camera flash uh, but you see the bottom of that sitting in oil take this out and there's your filter uh, there's a couple big pieces of black debris in here if these things have been sitting for a long time you will see bumblebees wasps mud daubers all kinds of insects that that actually looks really good so I'm not even gonna spray that out or clean it uh, that is just beautiful set that there eh. and this is the oil and I think about it I put fresh clean oil in here and you see where it says oil uh, to, to kind of like the top center of your screen uh, now in the center of your screen yeah that's the oil level um, but it's it, it proves the fact that it works in the fact that this oil's black and it's not coming out of an engine it's coming out of an oil filter or an air filter you know so let's see what we got in the bottom of it oh yeah she's dirty oil dirty air filter oil and yeah all of this sediment uh all of that was filtered out of the air the air you know look down in here uh, I can't even get my finger in there but yeah it's sludge it's crazy how good these things actually work but like I said K&N still uses them um, but yeah what's in the center here is the first incoming I would say probably larger particles and the outside is actually the air that goes back to the engine. Uh, you know, that's usually finer stuff, more sludgy. But I'm going to get it sprayed out with brake clean and I guess set it all to the side for now because, well, all that has come off. Now, usually, and I think this one is the same way, it'll have filter mesh up in there too. Um, I imagine you could probably get that out. I've never tried to get it out. If it, You know, now that I have a camera here, it almost looks like it's spot welded in like the lower ones probably meant to be cleaned and the topper the, the top with the topper one the upper one the top uh, well it's just part of the canister but you see those drips of oil hanging down right well if the bowl is here the oil level in the bowl is down an inch so the oil level is about where my thumb is and you've got those drops coming off you know that means it's pulling the oil and dirt vapors up and the oil just doesn't go past you know it catches everything it's supposed to catch but yeah I'll get that cleaned out and I'm just gonna set it to a side for now to be honest all right now I'm sad I could have swore I thought I remember there being a core plug back here Unfortunately, that is not the case. We have taken the three bolts out, one, two, three, and pushed this back, plus a clamp. And yeah, there is no core plug back here. Uh, I guess maybe there's one there in the corner, but it does not look wet. Uh, hang on, let me put the, the torch on. It must just be the head gasket leaking. So, I kind of see a crack there, lower center of the screen to the right. Ah, that's probably nothing. Maybe that is where it's coming from. To me, it looks uh, wet most the left-hand side of your screen. But, uh, instead of uh, taking the head off, I think I'm just going to retorque the head. That's probably the best bet, is just to retorque the head. A couple bolts for the valve cover. I got the big torque wrench in the truck because uh, it hasn't made it back home yet <sighs> gotta blow them off before you take them apart but uh, there's a couple bolts there no big deal the hood will flop put our special IH breather down over here uh, yeah take two bolts off valve cover yada yada you'll see torque head we're getting after it now all right well that took all of two seconds uh with the help of a milwaukee impact and i did have to use a wrench for one of them to keep the hood from just flying away 
Uh, yes, she was red at one point. There's a story behind why it's rusty and blue now, mostly the blue part. But I just kind of hooked that on the radiator cap to, you know, keep from just letting it hang on the bolts down there. And I guess at this point, we're probably going to go ahead and, you know, adjust the valves and do all that stuff that you're supposed to do. Because I probably do have 100 hours on it. And I have not retorqued the head. So I'm not super upset that it's leaking, unless it still leaks afterwards. Uh, but when I did this engine, I did nothing to the head. The head was fine. I cleaned it, put it back on. So it didn't have a brand new mating surface anyways, but... I guess I'm still a little bit in shock that it's leaking, other than the fact that I have not retorqued this head through many, 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 many heat cycles of raking. Uh, at one point I had a rototiller behind it that would just run it like a six foot rototiller. It might have been seven foot. It was a big rototiller for this tractor, and I was hitting virgin sod. Uh, but let's uh, see what we got. So grab a hold of this and kind of give it a shake. Might have to. Oh, she's sealed. Well, let me go find a mallet. All right. This is a Sum Slim 32 ounce hammer. It's actually a piston installing hammer from Summit Racing. It's laying on the bench because I was doing the 706, but I would not dare use the long side because that's the piston side. We're going to use the short side. Let's give her some knocks. It's actually a dead blow hammer. Here, it getting hollow. There's no real good way to hit it over here. Oh, I see it bouncing now. Okay, well, good. Because the when we struck out is when it came loose. Okay. We're wiggling. Looks like our gasket's staying. Oh, okay. Oh, thank gosh. Talk about a heavy valve cover. That some bitches. Excuse the language. It's it's cast iron. It is a heavy valve cover. All oh, looks good in there. Some rust from where it sat around in twenty two. Yeah, that's pretty good. See what we got in here, fellers. Uh, yep, some uh, magic springy stuff. That one pretty decent. That one feels like it might not be on the uh, base circle. Yeah, so obviously not all of them are up or down. But, yeah, I got my feeler gauges here. That one, it feels good, but it sounds loud. <clears throat> so we'll uh, torque the head down. And then uh, I'll probably run through those adjusting real quick. And I'll have to go find the manual from the manual shelf. Well, unfortunately, there's about to be more magic exploding parts. Josh Kale, remember that. And I have got to buy a new intake gasket. I thought, well, you know, the gaskets have only been on there not that long. And then I looked back at my old YouTube videos because I couldn't find the service manual for this thing. And I rebuilt this engine five years ago. Five years. It has raked a crap ton of hay. It has moved plenty of round bales. I used it for a sickle last year. It's basically been the chore tractor. I really have gotten a lot of use out of it. And it still runs great. I've just, I never retorqued the head. And, well, we've got that. And I could have threw some sealer in it and been like, oh, okay. But I'm not going to do that. We fix things right around here. <sighs> a lot of children. A lot of work hours. Buying a farm. Other fields. Different tractors. This whole assembly has to come off for me to torque the head. Uh... So yeah, I guess let's get into that fun. I'm going to show you as much as I can doing it one-handed. Uh, and the tractor parts will probably explode like they did last time. We just got to be ready for it. Well, see, like you can't, you can't torque that. It's under, you know, the whole reason why I took the intake off is for those four. But you've got stuff that's under the 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 main valve train that I, I there's no way to get to. 
But remember, if you look back, because I just did, there is a trick with some zip ties. We'll probably try that. Um, it looks like there's a, a collar here, a C-clip. Uh, it's not really a C-clip, it's a collar. But if it slides out, then surely I can slide it back in, would be my thought. I don't know. I'm going to take it apart and figure it out. My plan was to untorque them in sequence and then retorque them in sequence. I do know for a fact that the this one and this one is not a cylinder head bolt. It's it's just not. You know, the cylinder head bolts are entirely different and these are big studs. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll uh Oh, that's tight. Oh, okay. Hi. Now, without taking that all the way off, loosen this one. Can't tell they're lock bolts just because I just looked at that one. Okay. Uh, well, you know, they sometimes they come out. All right. I really think that I don't know what I'm doing anymore. This is just life. You know, you fix it. If you just know that you can fix it, it'll get fixed. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Set these oil-soaked fresh bolts on that rusty stuff. And, uh, see, I don't know. I think, I think that has to come off there. And I just don't remember. I just don't remember. I guess that's the biggest problem. All right. Now, I did not, absolutely did not find my service manual. Uh, did it get lost in the move? I have no idea. I could have swore I stumbled upon it several times in frustration looking for the correct 706 manual. But I think I can remove this stud, slide this whole assembly off. And then do the same thing over there. Now, I had to loosen the uh, things, but I said I was going to, you know, redo the valve lash anyhow. My goal for tonight is to just torque it back down. It's like 1030. Uh, not that big a deal as far as, like, the work. Like, it's just nuts and bolts, right? But I'll have to put two jam nuts on here, pull the stud out. Because the service manual tells you to put a... Uh, the service manual, well, I looked it up online, but it's the service manual copy I found. It tells you to put a special alignment stud in the corners and then there and whatever, but I'm pretty sure I could just pull this stud out, slide the whole assembly off, zip tied. If anybody looked back at the original video that only got like 12 views, 12 likes, 15 maybe, but I'm going to zip tie it together so we don't have magic exploding tractor parts and uh, take this assembly off. Take that assembly off, retorque everything, and go from there. All right, so I have two nuts. They are the two nuts for these studs jam locked together. Uh, I've already got this to spin. It was tough. I don't. Th I, maybe this is where I went wrong the last time. Is I didn't actually. Uh, I don't think I've removed these studs. The service manual that I downloaded talks about using installation studs for this, but come on. There we go. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's definitely a 916 and or 14 millimeter, but if no one knows, you put a, uh, if you got a 916 stripping out, you put a 14 on it. So these being tight. I guess doesn't mean anything to me other than maybe they're rounded a little bit or have been worked on. God only knows how many hours are on it. Uh, five years since my rebuild. I'm still calling that a success just for the fact of, well, I mean, I ain't had to work on it in five years. So if I got to retorque a head gasket, no big deal. I know on the gas big tractors like the 706, you're supposed to retorque those after uh, after 100 hours. Nothing has been retorqued on here. So, 
I'm still pulling her in for the win, I guess. We'll see if torquing this fixes the coolant leak. That'll be the real test. That eh, might be good enough to get by hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And because of these wires, I did say zip ties, but you know what? I found some wire from where we upgraded the other side of the shop to LEDs. Uh, that was the first thing I saw on the bench. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. That was uh, uncalled for, unnecessary. I should. Yep. Okay. Plan does accordingly. Now, I blew the dust off the bench right here just for these parts. When I was doing pistons and stuff, I had that all cleaned off, and that was where I put that stuff. But I probably should have laid down some paper towels. Oh, well. Uh, well, this is what we're looking at now. Um, not seeing anything alarming other than I'm going to have to get my two jam nuts off and put on that stud. All right, well, this side took all of two seconds because, well, I just did the other side. It's loose, uh, and it does screw back in. What I was talking about with the wires, see this gap in between the rocker and the thing? If, if this wire wasn't here, the springs would be boing. And if you look back, magic exploding tractor parts, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But we can go ahead and take this off. And we should be able to slide. I'm going to hold this up a little bit with this hand and pick up and slide. Uh, maybe. Well, you know how things work. Um, especially when you're, you're trying to tell somebody, oh, I got the greatest kids, and then they run off and fart in church, you know, or whatever. Uh, it should just slide out. I might have to put the camera down. Maybe I'm getting hung up on a push rod or something. Hang on. Yeah, so it was that guy right there. It was up too much. Uh, so I had to pull on the belt, turn the fan. No big deal. Let's try her again. Hold our stud up, grab our wires. Oh, there's our assembly. I also changed how I set this down over here because, well, the back of the tractor is facing the front of the shop, so I put the back of the stuff back here. Oops. It'll be all right. A little penetrating oil never hurt nobody. Brake clean, yeah, that's another story. Don't spray too many cans of that in here. So now I have it to where I can torque it. And it goes... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten, like that. I'm going to have to definitely put the camera down for this because, A, I need my cell phone for the uh, torquing sequence that I downloaded. And I don't know. I wish I had some way to set it up. Like it used to have, when I did this video, I had a, a little, like, three bendy thing that had a cell phone mount. Uh, or when I did the video on building this engine, but just all that's gotten lost since we moved. Uh, I've still got a bunch of boxes behind, like there's a, you know, like I said, there's a whole nother shop back there. Anyways, I quit yammering. I'm going to untorque them from the center to the out and then uh, torque them from the center to the out. All right, well, I have not done anything yet other than gather my extension and socket and my snap-on torque wrench. Really long, got this thing on a steel. It's like an $800 wrench. I think I paid $429 because it was a Halloween special. It said spooky all over the case. and Well, it was like February of a couple years ago. <laughs> if you look at it, these two, the one at the top of your screen, rusty, one at the bottom of your screen, oily. Those are the ones that are located in the back. So before I untorque it, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna untorque it from the center out the way you're supposed to, and then, come on camera, and then torque it the way you're supposed to tight. The idea, oh wow, I have no idea. Oh, maybe it's because that, who, uh, who knows. The idea is behind retorquing a cylinder head, and I work for Subaru. Subaru has you do that. Um, because they don't even hardly use gaskets, it's all sealer. You tighten a cam carrier down in their way, you know, and then you go through 
loosening the center and then tighten back. You know, that they have you do that on that. And the idea is the metal relaxes. Now, obviously on a Subaru, stuff is aluminum, but I'm sure after hundreds of key cycles and at least a hundred hours in five years, I guess I didn't realize it was five years ago I rebuilt this thing. You'll have some relaxation of the cylinder head. You know, probably the piston liners and everything else. Uh, anyways, I've got the torque wrench set to 80 foot-pounds, and I'm going to see if these back two bolts, which I believe are the ones that are causing the leak, uh, it's probably the whole head, but, you know, I'm going to see if, see if she's still on or have I talked too long. She's still on. <coughs> Hang on, we're going for a ride. Okay, rides over, had to switch hands. I am going to see if these uh, loosened up any. Oh, wow, yeah, I'm turning. See that? I'm turning. Yeah, so maybe that's why they say to do that. So that one went what we started turning at like 68 so something like that okay oh that one started turning at 53 and again down to 61 off camera we are only at 70 and we're yeah <sighs> damn it so you see what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was pretty confident this head just needed retorqued. Um, what did we say, 53 to 80? That's more than 20 foot pounds. So the metal's just relaxed over the years and over the heat cycles and uh, it just needed retorqued. It says that all over my 706 manual. After 100 hours, retorque and check valve lash. Now, I will give you a insider view on the 706 rebuild. My side cover is leaking. Did I anticipate it to leak? Yes, because I replaced the bolts. You can't find the original bolts. The original bolts have a shoulder, keep you from ever tightening it. They also have a seal. I split the cork gasket on it, whatever. Also, there's no place to find a torque spec for that. Uh, is what it is. We'll just replace the cover gasket, side cover. It's like a valve cover, but it's like for the side of the engine, you know, where all the push rods and lifters are. Uh, this one, I don't think it has it. I think this one just has the push rods go down through and you can't replace the lifters unless the head's off. Uh, so I'm looking at it and I don't see a side cover. And I think that's the way it was when I, you know, rebuilt the engine originally five years ago. But I'm going to go through retorquing this stuff and I don't know, call it a night. We'll go from there. It's 11, by the way. Probably 10 after by now. All right. It's 11.31. We got them all untorqued and torqued to 80 foot-pounds. I actually took them to 90. Uh, well, because... Um, Proof that it's untorqued is uh, as soon as I loosened the last bolt, we started having some bubble up, and I've already taken a rag and, and dabbled that up. And it's not too bad because, you know, coolant's water-based. There's the rag. And, you know, so the water will sit on top of the oil. You just touch that, and I guess we could show that now. You just touch that, and the rag will soak it all up and, and not the oil. But the biggest thing is, is I didn't want it to get into any of these oil drain backs or anything like that. You know, all I gotta do is touch it. Oh, you see it? See, wow, lightning fast. Now, we did just change oil, so I'm not trying to waste that. Just touch it. Oh, wait, torch. Turning the torch on. Touch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I will. I'll get in here and clean this up a lot better. It's just really late. And, uh, yeah, but all you gotta do is touch it when it's sitting on oil like that, and it's, it's no big deal. And if there's, like, tiny drops or something, that'll just steam off, you know.
see it disappear yeah we're soaking her up i did have one dot to get down there that hole and that wasn't even off of uh it didn't even run in that was off of my rag and i was like dang nabbit you know here i'm going through my due diligence to try to you know make sure that stuff doesn't happen and but what i'm gonna do is uh I'm not going to replace any of the gaskets. I'm just going to make a couple of those. And this valve cover gasket is still actually plenty pliable. It's only five years old, you know. Uh, so I think it'll seal fine. Um, I did have to temporarily reinstall the shafts with the studs to make sure that that was going to be straight. Um, because there's no alignment on it. But I just couldn't believe how loose they were. So, anyways, I guess that's it for tonight. I'm not sure how long this one was or where it'll fall in sequence with uh, the other videos that I've uploaded. I still need to do the part two on the Combine Golden Cut Series uh, Crary. And what all I'm going to do, like, it's, it's done. I made my crop for 23 and it's in the bin. I guess I could show you that too. Or maybe you saw a little bit of that in a short uh, or well, you know, I showed a little bit of the unloading, but <clears throat> I was just going to put fuel in the combine, raise it up, get it going, chick, 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 and show you what it's like and explain the uh, adjusters and stuff. But you know, that's I'm tired. It's Easter. I woke up at five ten yesterday. Had a prolapsed sheep. Fun. Didn't video that. Uh, but, you know, I spent yesterday with my hand inside something else fixing it. And then I went to the vet and then hauled some cattle for a guy. Uh, actually, the guy I bought this place off of. I actually found a second one of these tractors. I mean, like, way better condition. Actually, was still red. I think I said that earlier. Uh, but it needs some work. I'm on the fence about buying it. Anyways, I got to work in the morning. Uh, like I said, it's like 11.30. It's 11.31 when I started the previous clip, just two minutes ago. But, yeah, I'm going to shut her down for this evening. And hopefully you can put the order of my videos together. I'm going to try to put them out in the order I take them. It's just a couple days behind because there's a lot going on. And believe it or not, this is the slow time of the year. If you like what you see, come on back. Uh... You can subscribe for more, all that yada yada. Give me the thumbs up. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience in waiting for us to get here. You know, I no longer have to roll around in the grass or the gravel or dirt uh, or on my back porch. Uh, I have a nice shop to work in and I am so thankful for it. I am so thankful for all the people that have commented over the years and even, you know, last year with me not posting anything and uh, asking where I was at and hoping that I was doing well. Like I said, I now have my fifth child on the way. My other children are great. I currently have three boys and a daughter. We don't know what the other one is. But, yeah, I just really appreciate you guys because I guess you give, you, you validate what I'm trying to share. And that is that if you chase it, you can get it. You know, just like the field of dreams. If you build it, they'll come and uh, not that, you know, if I build this channel, you guys will come, but if, if you try to attain something and work really hard at it, you can get it. So anyways, God bless you. I appreciate it. If you watch to the end, uh, especially on my longer videos, there are some people that say full watch. Uh, I really like that. Um, just to tell me that you actually care about the whole story and not whatever I'm doing at that moment. I'll quit yammering. Take care.